You know when you run out of KY jelly, do you think it's okay to use that stuff you get in the middle of pork pies? <laughs> no? Right, oh, good. I'll stop doing that then. Because you know, single men, you get, it's, it's sartorial inelegance to them, isn't there? You know, I think it's because you've got no girlfriend at the front door saying, take the tank top off. <laughs> They're just straight out there. Socks and sandals. I'm going to go into the pub. <laughs> single women can always spot single men in pubs. They're the ones with the white T-shirts with a hint of pink, isn't it? <laughs> Where they wash for themselves with a pair of red underpants. And, ah, sod it. And your clothes always smell of mildew because you've left them in the washing machine for three days because <laughs> you're so lazy. People sit next to you, your clothes smell, and you go, piss off straight out the washing machine, this is. <laughs> How dare you? I find that ball thing weird. You know the little ball you got put in the washing machine? Bloody mad, isn't it? It gets everywhere. I was out dancing the other night and it fell out my trousers. <laughs> I could just sort of dance along the dance floor. Crikey, that's mine. <laughs> they don't give you another one of these, you know. <laughs> You've got to look after them. Single men trying to get it off me is going, piss off, it's mine. <laughs> it's powder in that, get your own. <laughs> you live in fear of walking into a nightclub with a square of bounce still stuck <laughs> to the back of your T-shirt. <laughs> Dancing away and it's being caught in the ultraviolet light. And people going, look at that knobhead over there. <laughs> hey, they're all looking at me, you know. <laughs> yes. It's a, um, they're trying to make men's, uh, men's underpants sexy at the moment as well, aren't they? Have you seen this, like, um, the all-in-one jobs you can get? Like the pants and the T-shirts stuck together, which are, like, great for the first day. You wash them and they shrink. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to walk around town with your testicles there. <laughs> like a brooch. That's a nice brooch. It's actually in my testicles, to be honest. <laughs> These underpants are a crack of me bum. Cos I think women buy these things. You buy these things for men, you're OK, cos you've got that bailout thing on your pants, haven't you? Yeah, right. Yeah, a little popper point thing, you can just bail out your pants really quickly. Can't you? That's what it's for, isn't it? So, gonna wet me knickers? No, I'm not. That was a close one, Tracy. You had to put a ripcord on mine. Put her off an action, man. I was trying to cook as well. It's like, you know, cooking for yourself is Sunday dinner. Oh, how they, they cook Sunday dinner. It's how do you get it all hot at the same time, you know? That's alchemy, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the peas are hot, potatoes cooked, meat's ready. If you come to my house, it's peas at six. <laughs> potatoes at midnight and meat on Tuesday. <laughs> this, you try and follow a recipe book, they're not written for men, they're written in bloody double Dutch. Only all the measurements are just made up names like knob of butter. <laughs> knob of butter, you think, what the bloody hell's a knob of butter? <laughs> you don't get them in knobs, you get them in packs. <laughs> Walk into Sainsbury's, I need four knobs of butter, please. <laughs> this is stupid. What's your one? One to best per. Isn't it? <laughs> one to best per. To best per? To best per? Never bloody heard of it. <laughs> Went to school, never had one to best per. Copper sulfate. Did you? Photographs in recipe books, they're just there to make you feel inferior, aren't they? <laughs> You're aiming for that photograph. It's beautiful. I tried to make gingerbread men once, like they had bloody cutters for theirs, only had scissors. <laughs> Mine come out, there was heads missing, arms off. Legs gone, they all had a fight in the oven. <laughs> One of them had gone mad with the heat. <laughs> Ran amok amongst his friends with a machete. <laughs> had to make little gingerbread crutches for them to hang on to. <laughs> we were eating them on stretchers. Terrible. <laughs> and people say, cooking for yourself, cheaper. Cheaper. You go, get off. Those gingerbread men were coming out like eight quid each. <laughs> they were eight quid each after I'd bought all the tools. <laughs> Don't tell you that, do they? I admire people that can, I really admire, who can cook things, right, you know, you know these people, and they cook, and it's beautiful, and everyone gathers around it, and they all go, oh, that looks too good to eat. And I'm there going, no one's ever said that about my food. <laughs> they normally say, did you drop it? <laughs> no, I never bloody dropped it. That's a lemon curd casserole. <laughs> with pickled onion trimmings. <laughs> and a nine-inch knob of butter. <laughs> hey! My cutlery drawer is very similar to a lot of people's. You open your cutlery drawer and it's knives, forks, spoons, little spoons, and then mess. <laughs> Isn't it? Sort of utensils you have never bought, you have never seen come through the front door, but you own them. It's like a mass of ironwork. You know, you can never get the bloody drawer open. You've got to get your hand behind the masher. You think, I must sort this drawer out at some point. 
There's like five egg white separators in there. You know, <laughs> never bought one. Where the hell they come from? <laughs> so suddenly he keeps going, I bloody buy these egg white separators. I've got one left. You know? And there's a, there's a cheese knife, you know, a little cheese knife with the hook on the end of it, which you keep for best. <laughs> for best. It's actually, it's not. It's when all the other cutleries in the bowl needs washing up. <laughs> I'm going to use this today. You know, it's time to do your washing up and you're eating your cornflakes with a ladle. You think? <laughs> like that. You got some washing up to do? No. <laughs> it's a spoon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>